Fala, Nick Fans! Beleza? Sou Victor Hatba, aqui do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Hoje, mais uma entrevista, interview internacional. Mais uma no canal Nick Fans Brasil. E estou trazendo ó, pela segunda vez né, o nosso canal, super canal aqui que eu adoro, do Noah, que é o Clutch Ball TV. Vai ser uma honra, it's a honor, né? Uh, bring again this channel for, uh, for talking with Brazilians. Uh, só avisando vocês que essa, essa, essa gravação funciona da seguinte maneira. Eu falo com o Noah a pergunta em português, depois em inglês ele vai responder, e aí o Bruno, né, após a resposta de Noah, vai passar para vocês a resposta em português. Beleza? Enfim, welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brasil channel again. Noah, Clutch Ball TV, man. Th thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I love your channel. I have a lot of respect for your channel because at the end of the day, there's New York Knicks fans outside of the United States, just all over the country. I think we're one of the most passionate fan bases ever and Yeah, if you want to check me out, my YouTube channel is Clutch Ball TV. Thank you so much for having me on. I hope all you guys are doing well. Ah, man. It's a great honor, man. It's a great honor. Thank uh, you. You know uh, I love your channel. So Thank very, you. very important uh, for me and Brazilians bring to you in, in the Nick Fans Brazil. Thank you. Let's, be, let's begin. Huh? For, uh, first question. Huh? Uh, first, in Portuguese. É, Noah, eu gostaria que você falasse para nós aqui brasileiros qual é a sua opinião sobre o draft da NBA para os Knicks, né? E os jogadores que, digamos assim, você tem maior preferência ou que você acha até mais realista, né? Para o New York Knicks. Em inglês for you, uh, what's your opinion about uh, this draft NBA for the Knicks, né? In this year? Uh, and uh, which players uh, for you, uh, favorite players uh, you like it? Né? Say to Brazilians uh, about the, the, the draft and the players for us. That, that's a great question because I think we're in a very interesting spot because obviously we're not in the top five. We're kind of at the bottom of the lottery. I feel like we expected that though. We had like a 70% chance or 80% chance of a le landing that 11th overall pick. I really like Dyson Daniels. He's the Australian guard, played for G League Ignite. So he actually had the pleasure of being mentored by Amir Johnson, who's played in the NBA for the Raptors, the Sixers. So I, I just think he's added the curve when it comes to just NBA knowledge and maturity. And he says his, like, his Achilles heel is a jump shot. Like, I feel like he's going to be as good as his jump shot really becomes, but When you take a look at this team, like we have RJ Barrett, we have Julius Randle. Yes, like we get frustrated with Julius Randle, but you could also say the offense is extremely bland. We don't have anyone to set up Randle, set up RJ Barrett, but Dyson Daniels, due to his workouts, he's been jumping up some boards. So I'm like, is he going to be there at 11? We might have to trade up for him. I really like Benedict Matheron from Arizona, but a lot of people aren't talking about this. Like, I, I, I like Mitch. Who knows? Mitch may come back, but there's still the possibility that he moves on in free agency. Maybe he wants more money or he wants a different type of role, and they think he, he thinks he's not being played throughout his strength. So a center I do like if Mitch walks is Jalen Dern from Memphis. And Mitch, I understand what he does, defending the perimeter. He blocks shots inside. He plays with a high motor. I like the way he rolls to the basket. We know he's one of the best top top shot blockers in the league. He's very athletic, but we know his rookie contract's expiring. And as much as we like Mitch, he hasn't attempted a jump shot. There's, he's kind of limiting our offense because he hasn't even attempted a hook shot as well. While there's more confidence in my opinion, again, we don't know if Tom Thibodeau is going to play the rookie if we draft him. There's still that possibility. Who knows what's going to go on to happen? But Jalen Dern, when I watch him play, I actually made a video on him. He has a face-up game. He's not afraid to take mid-range jumpers, which I feel like would take pressure off of R.J. Barrett because R.J. Barrett likes going to the basket. And Mitchell Robinson's constantly in the paint. And you could say Mitch kind of yes. clogs the paint or gets in R.J. Barrett's way. 
So you could say if we had Duran and his contract's expiring, there's more of a confidence like, yeah, we want to re-sign him because he makes the team more versatile. But there's tons of players I like. I like Malachi Branham, he's actually a shooting uh, guard. So, so, sorry, sorry, no. Uh, you talk about uh, Jalen Duran and uh, the Memphis Tigers. Do you like uh, Mark Williams from the Duke? It's a center uh, too. Do you like it or you prefer uh, Jalen Duran? Uh, and I, I like Mark Williams. He's very athletic. We know he's a ridiculously long wingspan, and Duke has a lot of players coming out this year, and he was one of the huge reasons they were successful. I just think Duran has a, a little more upside, but we know Tibbs likes getting the impact right away player. So I, I'm really interested to see if the Knicks are higher on Mark Williams or they're higher on Jalen Duran. But I personally like both of them. But And if we go on to draft a center also, maybe we, I'm not going to – like it's hard to say they're going to be as good as Mitch because they haven't played a game in the N NBA. But they're also, yes. on a, they're also on a rookie contract, so it gives us more flexibility – because we already have Fournier on the books. We're going to have to pay RJ at some point. We have Randall's contract. or it, We're just in such a weird position because there's a log jam at so many positions. Like, we have Noel, yes. we have Mitch, we have Sims at center. And then the wings we have, we have Fournier, we have Grimes, we have Red. It's like, there, there's so much versatility. But you could say the Knicks are kind of stuck in this weird position. Yeah, we have good players, but we need star players. We need high upside guys. It seems like we have too many solid guys, you know? And yes. I personally, I personally like Johnny Davis. I think he would fit alongside RJ pretty well. And yes. it's kind of good, it's kind good of, defender. Good defender. Yeah, he's a very good defender. He plays extremely hard. And for someone that's a shooting guard, he averaged eight rebounds per game. So he plays extremely hard. And yeah, he's not like he's pretty athletic. Like he's sneaky athletic. Like you wouldn't really expect it. Maybe you would like someone that has a better handle because when he did turn over, turn over the ball. He over dribbled at times, but he has a nice mid range, nice fadeaway. I know he only shot thirty percent from three, but he has a he has a good form that I think is capable of translating over. He could play on both ends of the floor, but we know RJ likes to have the ball in his hands. But he's a mentally tough player, and I think he would fit New York perfectly. But he's kind of a weird player because I see some mock drafts they have him going six, and then some mock drafts he's twelve. I'm like, I'm really confused. He is he is <laughs> he complicated. Has yeah, like, does the NBA know something we don't? Like, he's actually, um, like, they constantly play this one commercial, this one Taco Bell commercial over and over again. <laughs> so, I'm like, this man, this man may go on to be drafted in the top five. But I also talked about Jeremy Sohan. He's a, he's a power forward. But, like, I said this in my video. I know everyone's going to be like, Noah, we already have so many power forwards. This dude's not going to play. But if Tom Thibodeau is actually smart and actually watches Jeremy Sohan play, he has a level of versatility that he can grab a rebound, get out and run, get others involved, high motor. He, he's athletic. He moves very fluid. But, yeah, he's a, he's a good defender. I think he's the best defender in the, in the draft class. Like, he could defend multiple positions, but the main thing with him is his jump shot. How good of a shooter is he going to be? He shot only, like, 50-something percent from the free throw line. We already have guys that struggle from the free throw line. But there's tons of great players in this draft. I have no idea what the Knicks are going to do. I feel like no one really knows who we're going to draft. Uh, uh, Knicks needs uh, a PG. It's uh, a yeah. everybody knows. Everybody knows, man. Yeah. Uh, but draft it, it's complicated. Uh, you you talk. <laughs> uh, I don't know how, how player <laughs> man, the picks. Uh, I like it. Dyson Daniels, for example. Uh, I hear comp comparison for forgive my English now. I, I hear comparison with uh Gideon, uh, the Thunder. I, oh, I Josh Giddy, comparison. Yo. Josh Gideon, uh, uh, I like so much uh, maturing, but maturing pick seven, eight, or nine. Uh, I like so much Ca uh, Canada, like yep. uh, Sammy, like Sammy Barrett. Um, uh, I, I I saw uh, a video uh, from Malaki uh, Malaki Branham. Uh, oh, Malachi Branham. Mal yeah, yes. Uh, I I like it, the the this player. I I, I think he's interesting for the Knicks. Uh, what's your opinion about the this guy? Is he? So he's really interesting. So when I watched him play, I'm like, why is this dude being mocked like 16, 17? Because someone even commented on my video, I like him better than Johnny Davis. 
someone coming oh, Johnny down. Davis. My, That's very good, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I would be happy with Johnny Davis, obviously. When I watch Malachi Branham play, he's kind of similar to Johnny Davis, but the huge reason he's not really high on boards, not like he's an older player. He's actually younger than Johnny Davis. He entered the college yes. season. He was, he was only 18 years old when he started playing college basketball. He's 19 years old now. He has a level of maturity. He plays extremely hard. He can create his own shot, but he's kind of like Johnny Davis in a way. He's not going to break guys down off the dribble like crazy. He relies on great footwork. He has good body control. He's a sneaky athlete. And a reason why he's dropping down boards or some people, like the reason why he's not being ranged really high in the lottery is because some people, they don't really value the mid-range shot that much. And I, I'm kind of concerned sometimes the way Tom Thibodeau evaluates these players because Tom Thibodeau, he loves his guys shooting threes. Like, if you're open, shoot it. We even saw Taj Gibson shooting threes. Like, before he was a Nick, he didn't <laughs> yes. shooting threes. I was like, what's, go what's going on here? Like, Taj Gibson's not Stephen Curry. And then, so, I'm like, how much did Tom Thibodeau really, how much does he value the mid-range shot? Because he shot it really well from three. He actually shot it better than Johnny Davis. He shot almost 40%, but it was only on, like, two attempts. It's a very low volume. He was actually, I looked at the comparisons. I'm not saying he's going to be this player. But when you see the way he comes off the screens and how patient he is, because I feel like we need more patient players when they, they let the game come to them, you know? And we need more shot creators. There's way too many times we just go to Randall, go to RJ, and we know Randall, like I think Randall's a talented player, but he doesn't have it up here. He makes dumb decisions with the basketball. And if you don't have it up here, it, it doesn't matter. So we need shot creators that, that can take pressure off of RJ, especially because we don't have a point guard that can set guys up. But when you look at the playoffs, the game slows down. Like, look at the – like, Jason Tatum, he's one of the best players, like, in the finals right now, or the best player in the finals. What can he do? He can create yes. his own shot. And I feel like we need that, especially in the half-court setting. That's when the game slows down. And when I talked about Davis's fadeaway, Malachi Branham has a fadeaway. They're good from mid-range territory. Who – what players are great from mid-range territory that, like, went deep? Like, Kawhi won a championship, one of the best mid-range shooters. Difficult shot maker, plays at a good pace. Devin Booker, it was rough this year, but we saw him go to the finals with the mid-range shot because that shot's constantly going to be – it's going to be there. It's going to be available in the playoffs, in the finals, and you have to have that high basketball IQ. But obviously, t t he's too good to be true because I think he has the capability of getting better on defense. He's still very young. He has nice physical tools. He's only six foot five, but he has a near seven foot wingspan. So he has a very long wingspan, but he has struggled recognizing when to go on under screens, over screens. It's just like there's still a maturity factor. He needs to get better on that side of the ball. He has shown flashes, but you could say he's kind of raw on defense. But offensively, I personally really like him, and I think he's kind of a dark horse for the Knicks to take out 11. Uh you talk about the good shooters, né? Three points and so. Uh, what you, what's your opinion about um, AJ Griffin uh, from the Duke? Oh. It's uh, it, it's not a PG, it's not a center, but man, I like the, this player. It's a good player, man. Yeah, AJ Griffin's very interesting because he was one of the top players coming out of high school. He entered the college season, or before the college season, I believe. Like he had, he had, he had injuries. So when he came back, people were like, "He's," because he was kind of rusty at the beginning. He wasn't putting up crazy stats. He was inconsistent. And you could say we we haven't seen his peak of explosiveness and or athleticism because he was still recovering. But obviously, he was one of the best three point shooters. What did he shoot? Forty three, forty four percent. He shot very well from downtown for Duke. Another player like entering the draft from Duke, like Mark Williams. We obviously just talking about AJ Griffin and AJ Griffin's really strong. You you see him; he's built like a football player. Yes, <laughs> athleticism yeah. from him. It's impressive. Yeah, and I feel like he has the capability of posting up, and I feel that would be the perfect player alongside RJ. I'm not sure what his ceiling is shot creation wise, but where RJ needs to take his game to the next level is driving, recognizing the defense is on him, and kicking it out. And I feel that would be perfect for AJ Griffin. And, yeah, he's, he's a good defensive player as well. He's kind of, like, he's weird. Like, I think he's going to be a solid player. I don't know if he'll ever be a star. I don't know if he's someone we should trade up for. But then, like, he has a strong work ethic. His, his father 
actually is the assistant coach for the Toronto Raptors, a yes. Adrian Griffin. Yeah, so I think Tibbs has like connections or he's known about him for a while because I believe he's friends with Adrian Griffin. But he's an interesting player. I wouldn't be surprised if he's an all-star, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a solid player. I don't see him being bad. I think he'll be very solid at best or um, at uh, the worst. Uh, I, I, I saw uh, a post, uh, Berman talking uh, that uh, Dyson Daniels uh, comments uh, it's a good defender, Knicks. It's a good defender uh, because Chibodo loves good defenders. Yeah. I, I, I saw Verman posted uh, about Dyson Daniels' comment, uh, it's a good defender. I, I saw, yeah. I, I, I like so Hiller uh, when I, I, I saw this post. Dyson Daniels, uh, it's a, a, a great player, man. Uh, if the Knicks uh got it the this player man the yep. knicks uh will be so 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 much uh, uh so we win uh, so much with this player man uh but uh i i liked uh, so uh ask to you about uh tai tai washington uh i hear uh so many people compare it uh, with uh emmanuel kickley uh, uh, mm. uh so uh Floaters at uh, so floaters uh, and and planes about this guy. How are your opinion about Tai Tai Washington? I'm lukewarm with them because I could watch these players, but at the end of the day, I'm not a professional. Like we could say Tai Tai's next quick, but then he can end up being like an all star. Like these Kentucky players, you never know. Just the history of these Kentucky players: John Wall, the Marcus Cousins. There's been so many great players. Com coming out of Kentucky and like a lot of people weren't high on Shea Gilgis Alexander. He ended up being like an all-star level player. They he said they said he couldn't shoot. He's improved as a three-point shooter. I see the comparison to quickly and I kind of don't like his draft stock really dropped. Like I remember towards the tail end of the season or like 10 games before the season ended, there were so many mocks. They had him going 11 to the Knicks or when we were like the 10th pick at one point, they had him going to the Knicks. And then you notice how much he dropped to like 15 i've seen some mock drafts drafts him going to 20 and i think one of the main reasons he's dropped is like quickly in a way coming out what's his true position is he a point guard is he a shooting guard is he like this combo and one of his best things is supposed to be shooting the basketball and he was pretty inconsistent from three but i understand the quickly comparisons he has the floater he's not crazy athletic you won't see him dunk a lot but he has a good feel for the game he has a nice mid-range shot everything i hear like he's a he's a really hard worker but what i was really scared of i know sometimes you shouldn't read too much into the tournament i feel like there's some players that play very well in the ncaa tournament so their draft stock goes from the second round to the first round because i understand some people or some scouts are like oh he plays good in the big time moments you know and ty ty washington I'm trying to remember what game it was saint peter's saint peter's was this college team that just went on an absolute run that no one expected at all. They even beat Purdue, Jaden Ivey's on that team, and it was just absolutely amazing to see. And I, he barely showed up in that game. So I think that's a huge reason his draft stock dropped because you want players that step up in huge games. I think he only had like three or four points in that game. I'm like, this guy's supposed to be a lottery pick, but he's a good-looking form. I watched his workout the other day when it came to – draft express they upload these like workout videos and uh -huh. he doesn't he doesn't have that much elevation on his jumper while when i watch johnny davis i don't know if you notice this with him like he has so much elevation on his jumper he can get it over anyone and when it comes to shot creation wise like you either have to be a really good shot creator or you have to be a very good playmaker and at that point i would just stick with quickly i wouldn't really understand drafting Ty Ty. i think he's a solid defender but i just think he's a, he's an okay player i don't think he'll be terrible i think he can make an impact on the team but i'm personally not that high on him but who knows he may end up proving me wrong and he could be freaking <laughs> the best best player out of the draft you never know no, i agree i agree with you uh what do you think about oshai agibaj uh do you know oh, okay. about the, the this player yeah, I made a video on him, Abaji from Kansas, right? Um, yes, yes. He's, I, I, I really like his game. He's kind of an older player. I think he's 22 years old. He's coming out as a junior or a senior. He's made huge improvements when it comes to shooting the three. He shot over 40% from three. You could say his free throw percentage needs to get better. It wasn't at 80%, but 
he's someone that's just like he's grown into his body year after year. He's extremely strong. He's a very good defender. He kind of reminds me of Grimes in a way. Like he's really oh, good at coming cool. coming. Yeah, he reminds me of Grimes in a way, but I think he's a more athletic version of uh, Grimes. See. And he has a lightning quick relief. He's fearless. That's what I like. He was one of the huge reasons Kansas went on to win the national national championship. Like he just has that he has that winning mindset to him and he kinda has that no nonsense mindset. And I feel like a lot of people just look at how talented they are, but I want to know how hard of a worker they are as well. And you see how much he's gotten better year after year. So that really speaks volume about his character, but he's not someone that's really going to create off the dribble like crazy. I think he's a very solid player and I think he's capable of starting for the Knicks, but the Knicks, it's so, I know like the Knicks, like some people in the organization may be afraid. Us fans may be afraid because we look for these high upside guys, you know, Yes. Knox, didn't work out. <laughs> ah, I, yeah. Don't remember, guy. Don't remember me. For, for, please. <laughs> yeah. But, no, but, but you're right. You're right, man. You're right. <laughs> he, he does a little bit of everything, and I think he'll be a very impactful player at the next level, and I wouldn't be mad drafting him at all. I think he's a, a very good player. He's strong, he's physical, and he's a winner. Yes, uh, and, and the number of picks depends, né? Uh, Kikley, uh, pick uh, 25. And a mm -hmm. uh, great player, man. I love Kikley. Yep. Kikley, uh, it's a great player. Uh, fan base, né? Knicks fans, likes. Uh, yep. Manuel Kikley. Yeah, yeah, it was pick 25, man. <laughs> I, I feel... Go ahead, go ahead. No, no. Uh, I feel like we always we always get like these solid players later. Like I feel like we always draft better later than like earlier. Like you know, like some people like quickly, um, more more than Obi Toppin, and um, <laughs> and Mitchell Robinson ended up better than Kevin Knox. We drafted Mitchell Robinson in the second round, and Frank Nilakino was was a disappointment. <laughs> so, so like so. Some people were big fans of Damian Dotson. We got later in the draft. Like I, I kind of like Dotson a little bit. He was a solid shooter, good defender. But yeah, who knows? The Knicks always end up getting some gem in the second round. I need, I need to follow the second round a, a little bit more. But I've looked at like a couple prospects for them. Man, I, I will, will pray so, 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 so uh, <laughs> this, this month for the yeah. Knicks, man. Really, really. Uh, next question about the draft, né? Uh, before in Portuguese for you. Uh, Noah, uh, aproveitando esse assunto do draft, uh, você acredita que existe alguma chance do Knicks uh, negociar, tentar subir né, no draft para pegar a pick 4? Uh, in English for you. Uh, what do you think about this rumor? And, and the Knicks uh, wants uh, negotiate né, a pick four with Kings uh, because I hear so much the Knicks uh, in love in love uh, with uh, Jaden Ivey. Uh, what's your opinion about these rumors? Wow. So when you text me that, I was like, I'm really excited to talk about this this topic because we know Knicks fans. <laughs> Some Knicks fans will be upset if we trade up to four. Like, some Knicks fans are upset no matter what. <laughs> Why? We, we trade up to four, but we couldn't trade up to one? Like, that's literally Knicks fans. But I really do like Jaden and Ivy. I think Jaden and Ivy next to RJ would be freaking awesome oh. to watch for years. Because Jaden and Ivy, like, RJ's a solid athlete, but you see Jaden and Ivy play, he's fast. Like, he has that if factor. He's a fearless player. He gets to the basket. Ferrari. <laughs> Zero. Uh... <laughs> yup. He, he's pro, he's progressing as a playmaker. Um, he's he's just gotten better every year. But tr we have to trade up to four first, and we have to think about what are, what's going through the Sacramento's head, Sacramento's head right now. Obviously, they have this reputation of not really being a well-run organization. Coach after coach, new GM. So what's the Kings' mindset? They traded for Sabonis. They traded away Halliburton, and I think Sabonis is a good player. But they made the mistake. They're like, we're rushing the process. They're not looking at the long-term plan. And I think that was the worst decision because you traded someone who's on a rookie contract, not like his contract was coming up. This dude, he was drafted the same year as Obi, so it's his thir third year coming up. You didn't, you didn't have to pay him. I think it was kind of a panic move 
by the organization, like, oh, we got to start winning games, and they didn't really end up winning games. But they're just going to be stuck in mediocrity. They're kind of going to be stuck in the middle of nowhere with that move. But the Kings, they tend to not make the best of decisions, so I would not be surprised if they're like, we have to keep De'Aaron Fox happy. Uh, I get a little too excited when I say this, but they could trade for Randall. They're going to be like, we traded for Savonis. We have Fox. We'll see if they bring back like Dante DiVincenzo. They have some solid pieces. They're like, let's try to win now and compete. We haven't been to the playoffs. I think the last time they went to the playoffs, I wasn't even born. I'm not even joking. Like the last time the Sacramento Kings went to the playoffs. So like maybe we could build a nice little big three and I'll, we'll see if they hold on to Davion, Davion Mitchell. But do the Kings realistically want Julius Randle? Because you're not just trading away Julius Randle, the player. You're trading away his play style. How is it going to hurt Sabonis' play style, De'Aaron Fox? He, but he would go to a smaller market, which I do like for him because I still think I'm not – like Randall, he's talented, but he's not built for the bright lights. I feel like if there's less attention on him, Randall can thrive. And I know so many Knicks fans are going to be like, I knew it. Randall was really good. <laughs> Why would we trade him away? Randall's a good player, but he would not be able to do the same thing in like – with the bright lights compared to a smaller market when there's less attention yes. on them. But are the Kings willing to do it? Are the Knicks willing to do it? Because for the fourth pick, we would have to give up a lot. We would po- possibly have we would possibly because we would have to take on a bad contract from the Kings too. We'd probably have to take on like Harrison Barnes and some other contracts like that. But let's say they don't want Randall. Are you willing to give up future draft capital? Are you willing to give up? Obi's going to have to be gone if you want to trade up to four. Quickly will have to be gone. They may they may want Grimes, so yes. if if they think Ivy has a chance to be an All Star plus player, you do it. But if you don't, I don't do it because like what's the point? So they better have a plan in mind if they go on to trade up for four. Do I personally think we're going to trade up to four? No, I don't, because I actually think the Kings might be decently smart this time. But I don't know. I don't but, personally but, think but, that's going to happen. É, uh, I will ask exactly for you, né? Se, se, uh, if in your opinion, né? Uh, the Knicks uh, will be, né? Uh, negotiate, negotiate uh, this pick. Uh, I don't. I, 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 I will be interesting for the Knicks because Ivy uh, can be changed this franchise in uh, in the one year help so much, né? But I, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't guess, né? The Knicks uh, will be, uh, but uh, Knicks, Knicks loves uh, give a surprise for us. Oh, yep. last year trade picks, uh, making making Knicks fans crazy in this draft. Yep. Man, in Brazil, in Brazil, people crazy, man. In this the last was draft, too. man. <laughs> Então, uh, sobre essa primeira parte da, da entrevista, né, que foi feita com o Noah, é, do canal Clutchball TV, né, a primeira questão aí, né, abordada foi o draft para a NBA 2022. Uh, a gente, foi abordado, né, nesse papo, é, questões iniciais ali que a gente conversou sobre alguns jogadores que poderiam ser os favoritos, os realistas, né? E também é, sobre a possibilidade do Knicks é, querer negociar a pick 4, né? Com o Sacramento Kings. A questão dos jogadores, né? Que foi comentada na, na entrevista... Um dos jogadores de destaque que, que Noah comentou foi o australiano, né, Dyson Daniels, né, é, até, até foi comentado da minha parte com ele que, é, comparado com o Josh Giden, né, que é um jogador lá do OKC, e ele fez altos elogios, né, as qualidades técnicas, né, de Dyson Daniels, até relembrei, né, na conversa é, sobre uma matéria que o Mark Berman postou, né, que o Dyson é, comentou que é um bom defensor e como todo mundo sabe o Tom Timbaldon gosta de, de bons defensores e fez, fez outros comentários muito bons sobre Dyson Daniels. É, foi comentado também sobre Maturin, né, canadense, 
com várias qualidades boas também, mas que existe uma probabilidade maior. Então, é, foi comentado também sobre um jogador que está sendo citado em muitas entrevistas, Johnny Davis. Johnny Davis ali tem sido realmente um dos jogadores talvez mais realistas e mais potencialmente interessantes para o Knicks. Ele destacou com ele também inúmeras é, qualidades desse jogador. É, marcação, ataque, né? é, desenvoltura, defesa, né? entre vários e vários aspectos a respeito de Johnny Davis. Uh, foi comentado também uh, que como o, o é, Mitchell Robinson, a gente não sabe qual vai ser o destino que vai acabar o contrato dele de Hulk, foi comentado também sobre dois centers, né? foi comentado nesse, nesse trecho sobre Jalen Duren, né, do Memphis Tigers, e também do Mark Williams, de Duke. Né? Ele também destacou esses jogadores, comentou é, que são jogadores interessantes. Mark Williams, por exemplo, que nem Duke, né, que sempre revela é, bons jogadores. Foi comentado isso. É, e também, é, além disso, é, de Duke, a gente também falou sobre AJ Griffin, que é um bom chutador de três, né? e, que, e que poderia também ser bem interessante jogando com o RJ Barrett e, e o time do Knicks, né? Fora AJ Griffin, que é um bom chutador de três, que a gente comentou também, ele, ele citou também a, o Jeremy Sohan, né, de Baylor, que, é um, que na opinião dele é um dos melhores é, marcadores, né, defensores desse draft. Ele comentou sobre o Jeremy Sohan. Foi comentado também sobre Malakai Branham, só que ele acha que talvez seja lá por pique 15, 16, 17, na opinião dele mas que ele acha, assim, um, um bom jogador, né, que tem boas características. Falamos também sobre Tai Tai Washington, né, que eu comentei, assim, que eu vi em alguns vídeos, até no vídeo que eu pus no canal, que ele tem algumas características e comparados com o Emmanuel Kikley. Ele disse que é um jogador que não é ruim, mas que também não é um jogador, pelo que eu entendi, que pode mudar, né, uma situação. Ele pode ser um jogador útil, né. Mas ele frisou né, que Kentucky normalmente nos surpreende e revela grandes jogadores, né? Então ele comentou sobre esse jogador. Falamos também sobre é, o Shai Agbaj, né? Que ele também comentou que também acha é, um jogador interessante né, para os Knicks. Aí dentro de todas essas questões, comecei a questioná-lo né, sobre o interesse que o Knicks poderia ter de querer negociar a PIC 4, né, com o, Sacra... com o Sacramento Kings, que o Jaden Ivy é provável PIC 4, que é a do Sacramento Kings. É... No caso, o, o Noah, é... no início, né, ele comentou sobre que aquela fama, né, que o Sacramento Kings não tem de fazer boas escolhas, né, cometer alguns erros, até ele achou algumas questões das negociações, né, por ter aberto mão de um jogador que foi para o Indiana Pacers, o Halliburton, e comentou, fez bons elogios, lógico, aos Sabones, falou muito sobre possibilidades tal, né, que também ele não ficaria surpreso, né, se acontecesse, né, disso do Sacramento Kings é, negociar a pique 4 com os Knicks, tal. Ressaltou algumas questões que poderiam ser feitas, né, entre Kings e Knicks, né, porque, querendo ou não, o, Nick, o Kings tem já o Fox, né, que poderia ser, é, é, não teria tanta necessidade nessa posição. Chegou a comentar, né, possíveis trocas, mas é, é o que está sendo realmente dito em todos as, os vídeos, né, porque a gente não sabe realmente, mas que não seria uma surpresa se acontecesse. E destacou as qualidades, lógico, de Jaden Ivey, né? Que é um jogador é, playmaker, que é um jogador que tem extrema explosão, né? Até brinquei que ele parece uma Ferrari, que ele sai de 0 a 100 em poucos segundos. Então é um jogador inteligente, é um jogador que, que pode ser muito interessante para uma franquia, né? Uh, fora isso, aí a gente foi comentando, né? Sobre questão dos drafts, né, que, por exemplo, às vezes uma posição alta não quer dizer que você vai pegar um bom jogador ou um mau jogador. 
Que nem, por exemplo, o Emmanuel Kikley foi pick 25 e o Knicks teve sucesso com essa pick, porque o Emmanuel Kikley é um dos jogadores que a torcida do Knicks mais gosta. Então, é tudo muito relativo. E aí ele até lembrou situações, né? Que eu até falei, não me lembre. Que é, por exemplo, o hype que tinha é... Kevin Knox e o hype que não tinha o Mitchell Robinson, né? Que eram picks contrárias. E ficaram contrários porque o Mitchell Robinson caiu nas graças da torcida. Né? Então, foi falado também sobre isso. A gente citou as experiências também do Knicks e tal. É, que até os brasileiros nas mudanças de picks e tal e, mas mesmo assim foi um draft que, que foi bom né? os últimos tal. e tal e basicamente a gente falou em cima disso, dessas opiniões né? é, que de repente algumas dessas posições aí, principalmente é, Johnny Davis, acho que ficou o mais destacado deles, que pode ser o, o mais interessante para a franquia e em segundo lugar, ali, do que ele citou em todos os argumentos, das são Daniels, né? Então, é, do que ficou desse papo do draft, basicamente foi isso, pessoal. E além disso, no início do vídeo, ele também é, disse que estava muito feliz, que ele elogiou o projeto né, que o Nick Fans Brasil está fazendo, uh, que, que se sente muito bem ele falar com a gente. Então, foi uma experiência muito agradável. É, o fato dele já, já desde o começo ali, é, citar que é, que é interessante aparecer com a gente no canal. Seria isso os temas desse vídeo. E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva, aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos e também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! <música>